Welcome to Time Recap. In our second video we're going to recap an American drama from 1955, titled Rebel Without a Cause. Sit back, relax and enjoy the video. Spoilers ahead. During the mid-50s, a teenager named Jim Stark, not long after moving to California with his parents, is arrested and taken to the police station for being too drunk in public. At the station he crosses paths with John also known as Plato, who was arrested because he killed a bunch of puppies. He also meets Judy, who was brought in for curfew violation. Curfew is a way to keep teenagers safe by making sure they are at home during specific hours. The three separately reveal their innermost frustrations to Sergeant Ray. All three of them suffer from problems at home. Judy, we're ready for you now. Judy is convinced that her father ignores her because she is no longer a little girl, so she dresses up in racy clothes to get attention. Is that why you were wandering around at one o'clock in the morning? He called me a dirty tramp. Which only causes her father to call her a dirty tramp. No. While Plato's father abandoned his family when he was a baby, and his mother is often away from home, leaving Plato in the care of his housekeeper. When Jim's mom, dad and grandma show up at the station to bail him out, the messy family drama unfolds. Jim informs the cop about his messed up family situation that his parents are constantly at each other's throats. Jim gets frustrated by his constantly arguing parents. His dad Frank, who's not exactly the bravest soul, tries to defend Jim, but his mom Carol, who likes things her way, always wins the arguments because Jim's dad can't find the courage to stand up to her. Jim feels hurt and devastated by all these disagreements and his dad not being strong, which makes him feel like he doesn't belong. Sergeant Ray has a private conversation with Jim, during which Jim expresses his difficulties. Sergeant Ray tries to provide guidance and support. He assures Jim that he is always accessible to him if he needs to talk. The next day, on the way to his first day at Dawson High School, Jim again meets Judy. He remembers seeing her at the police station and offers her a ride. Judy doesn't seem impressed. She declines by sarcastically saying, I bet you're a real yo-yo. Yo -yo. Calling someone a yo-yo -yo is a term used to describe someone as stupid and foolish. I love you too. And is instead picked up by her friends a gang of rebels led by Buzz Gunderson. It turns out she belongs to Buzz. Jim's intention is to fit in with the other kids at school. However, the rest of the students avoid him, except Plato. That afternoon, Jim's science class heads to Implanetarium for a field trip. Planetarium is a building built primarily for presenting educational and entertaining shows about astronomy. They witness a breathtaking show about the death of the universe. After the show, Buzz provoked Jim and slashed a tire of Jim's car for no good reason. Then, Buzz challenges Jim to a dangerous knife duel which Jim refused to participate and doesn't want any trouble. But they make fun of Jim by calling him a chicken. Run chicken, Don't lion. call me that! Jim unwillingly fights Buzz and beats him by knocking his switchblade out of his hand. He stops Buzz by putting a knife near his throat and then throws both knives away. I don't want any trouble. Buzz, to preserve his status as gang leader, dared Jim to a risky chicky run game at 8 p.m. Jim accepts the challenge, despite having no idea what a chicky run is. Plato, what is a chicky run? A chicky run is a deadly challenge where they both race stolen cars toward the edge of a cliff. The first to eject out of his car is labeled a chicken. At home before heading to the dangerous challenge, Jim asks his father about defending one's honor in a dangerous situation. No, you give me a direct answer. However, Frank advises him to avoid any form of conflict. Despite Frank's advice, Jim is not convinced and leaves in a hurry. This is a big challenge night because of that many students have gathered to watch. Buzz is surprised when Jim arrives because he did not expect Jim to join in. Buzz is starting to really like Jim and he's being super friendly about Come on, let's go see what we're driving. He shakes hand with Jim. I'm Buzz Gunnarsson. They flip a coin to determine who rides in which car. In the meantime, Judy's interest in Jim grows as she asks Plato many questions. What's he like? Plato presents Jim not just as a friend but with a sincere connection similar to a father figure. Before they start the deadly game, Jim and Buzz share a cigarette. Buzz unexpectedly says to Jim, I like you. I like you. Jim recalls, then why do we do this? Why do we do this? You gotta do something. Buzz, on the other hand, insists by saying, you got to do something, and walks to his car. The rest of the gang rush to their cars in order to light up the cliff with their headlights. 
Judy wishes both Buzz and Jim the best of luck. Buzz reminds Jim that when Judy gives the signal, they will head towards the edge, and the first man to jump is a chicken. First man who jumps is a chicken. Judy gives the signal, and the duel begins. But things go terribly wrong for Buzz. His leather jacket gets stuck on the door handle, preventing him from exiting before the car goes over the cliff, ultimately leading to his tragic death. As police approach, the gang flees, leaving Judy behind, but Jim persuades her to leave with him and Plato. Jim hurries home, desperate to tell his parents about the tragedy. However, they can't grasp what he is saying. When Carol declares that they are moving again, well, it doesn't matter anyway because we're moving. Jim begs Frank to stand up for him. When Frank refuses, Jim gets mad and attacks his father. He gets so frustrated that he storms off to seek justice. Jim goes to the police to find Sergeant Ray, who had taken his statement the night before. To his disappointment, the officer isn't there. Meanwhile, things aren't great at Judy's home. She can't get along with her dad. He only seems to care about her younger brother. Stop that! Sit down! This isn't my home. Back to the police station, Jim discovers that Sergeant Ray won't be arriving anytime soon. Not wanting to speak with just any policeman, Jim decides to leave. Unfortunately, three of Buzz's friends see him leaving the station. They mistakenly believe Jim has told the police about the chicky run, so they decide to go after him to silence him permanently. Jim heads home and finds Judy waiting for him. She apologizes for treating him badly, influenced by her friends. The two begin to fall in love, agreeing to never return to their unfair homes. I'm never going back. Jim suggests they visit an old deserted mansion that Plato told him about. Meanwhile, Plato is intercepted by three members of Buzz's gang, who are convinced that Jim betrayed them to the police. They find Jim's address from Plato's address book. Plato retrieves his mother's gun and leaves to warn Jim and Judy, finding them at the abandoned mansion. What do you think of my castle? The three new friends act out a fantasy as a family. Jim is the dad, Judy is the mom, and Plato is the child. Plato, feeling loved for the first time, calmly falls asleep. Jim and Judy leave to explore the mansion, where they share their first kiss. At the same moment, members of the gang discover Jim's hiding place. Plato, nervous and annoyed, shoots and injures one of the gang members. When Jim returns, he tries to stop Plato from escaping. Plato accuses Jim of abandoning him. Why did you run out of me? Outside of the abandoned house, a local cop, suspicious of Jim's car, attempts to inspect the house for evidence of a house break. Looks like house breaking. However, Plato, who is in a very shaky and unstable state, fires to the police. In a moment filled with tension and fear, Plato rushes out of the house towards the observatory which is nearby. The police quickly surround the area, making Plato more devastated. Sergeant Ray, Jim's parents, and Plato's housekeeper are also outside the building, shocked by the events. Come outside quietly. While Jim and Judy rush into the observatory to find Plato, Sergeant Ray recognizes Jim and orders his men not to shoot. Hold your fire! Jim finally finds Plato in the observatory. In a persuasive move to make Plato feel more secure, Jim offers him his red jacket and asks Plato if he can borrow the gun. Jim skillfully removes the bullets before returning the gun and convinces Plato that it's now safe to come outside. I could come in here and I could bring you out. Plato is annoyed with the blinding lights from the police cars. It's too bright. Jim, in order to relieve Plato's stress, urgently requests Sergeant Ray to turn off the headlights. Okay. <laughs> Jim carefully accompanies Plato as they step out of the building. Who's that? When the cops notice Plato still has the gun, they again turn on the lights, making Plato more frustrated. No! A tragic turn of events unfolds as a police officer fires at Plato. Jim desperately shouts to the police. Got the bullets! But too late to prevent the tragedy. Plato dies and Jim's father rushes to the boy, believing that Jim has been shot. Plato was wearing Jim's red jacket, because of that Frank assumed it was Jim who was shot. Plato's housekeeper grieves, he has no one in this world. Poor baby got nobody, just nobody. Frank comforts Jim, being proud of him, vowing to be a stronger father. You can depend on me. Now reunited with his parents, Jim introduces Judy to his family. This is Judy. Together they drive away into the breaking dawn, a new chapter beginning as they leave the tragic events behind.
In conclusion, Rebel Without a Cause is a meaningful look at the challenges of teenagers. The movie stays important because it shows the common experiences of youth, making it a timeless and relevant piece of cinema history. Thanks for watching the second episode of Time Recap. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this.